And I'm John Newman. Welcome, Welcome to, to Card Menches. Oh, uh, hello. I am Danny Black, and that is John Newman. Welcome to episode number three of Card Menches. John, I know you're in the middle of something, so uh, thanks for uh, sticking your head up a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching an auction. I'm trying to win uh, on eBay some old uh, vintage boxing. It's actually a complete set of 1938. I hope I just didn't like screw myself. Uh, saying that uh, it's got like three about three minutes left so let me uh pull up my tail uh, uh, um uh, under five minutes so uh, uh, i'm gonna give us the play by in. play and uh, yeah. you know, it's, it worked out well because we wanted to talk about how to buy cards that are not graded and how to buy raw cards and so john john coincidentally had an auction ending tonight so we said let's just go live and get the live play by play and see if he wins this um but in the meantime w- welcome welcome to episode three uh we are the Card Menches, and a, if you don't know, a Mensch, uh, we believe, is a kind, thoughtful, and honorable person, and we'd like to believe that inside the hobby, uh, we are full of Menches, so uh, we'd like to sh- share that love and pass it forward. Uh, however, you're buying boxing cards, so uh, I, I, if, if you can multitask here, tell, tell us what you're trying yeah. to buy on eBay, and once again, these are raw, because we're talking about buying ungraded tonight. Yeah, it's a 1938 Churchman's Boxing, that's a uh, uh, English English com- uh, company uh, back in the day. They, I don't believe they exist anymore. Cigarettes. So they're cigarette cards, much like the old vintage here that we're familiar uh, with, uh, you know, in the States. It's just a, you know, a, a UK company. Uh, Ten cigarettes in a pack. And uh, they put one of these cards in between the ten cigarettes. So there'd be a row of five cigarettes to one card, which is like a T206 size, and then the other five cigarettes. And uh, it's a 50 card set. Uh, I actually... I don't want to run out of time, but I will put some yeah. up. Um, they, they, this is the, the card. This is almost a full set. It's 47 uh, of the 50. No, I didn't rubber band the cards. They're in little T206 uh, top loaders. Uh, and so it's that set, but it's complete. Um, and I'll still try to uh, complete the other one as well. We're down to under a minute. So I'm, I'm, I may look like I'm looking at you, but I'm actually looking at the, the off screen. No, no, no I'll, right I'll take, I'll take over here. So are you the high bidder? I, I'm, uh, you try to answer this. I haven't like even been yet. I want to be. I'm going to be the sniper here if I get this. I'm not, okay, so, I'm so not bid. How high over the bid are you going to go? Uh, a decent amount. A decent amount. I want to try to win this thing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about specifics, whether I win or lose it, either way. Uh, but uh, obviously, I'm going to try. But you have to not placed a bid. You're you're in the final seconds. Where are we on the clock? Oh, he's putting uh, in the number. 15 he's like, seconds. I am. I am typing. He's sniping. He's sniping. So, if you guys ever want to know who steals so your cards, you're watching it happen. Let's see if he wins. This is for the Churchman's Boxing Complete Set. And John is buying them raw. I believe this is off of eBay. And part of our conversation okay, is yeah. buying cards raw. So we're watching John live bid on auction that is ending right now. Oh my God. I didn't get my bid in in time. Oh, see? Sniper, sniper, sniper. It's messed. all your fault, Dan. Oh, well, I'm not don't, even calling don't, you Danny. That's how, like, I I don't know. I did it with seven seconds. I bet I wonder we're doing the show. Wow. And the bid never went up from what it was. That's crazy. That's uh, That sounds like uh, some sort of a uh, rigmarole. I don't know if I believe that. It's weird. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Very disappointed. (laughs) Well... (laughs) Well, we'll talk about talk about anticlimactic. Right. Well, so the whole point is you were willing to buy a whole set raw off of eBay, and this would not have qualified for the authenticity guarantee, correct? Well, unless it goes over two fifty, which I wasn't going, I wasn't going to bid. Which, right. Uh, man, I bid with seven seconds. Apparently, that's not enough time. All right. So, so uh, yeah, double double D is- vintage seven seconds. Man, I wait till one second. I got news for you. That- yeah. I know. I'm always scared. That that's Dylan. Hey, Dylan. I'm always scared to wait too close. Like where you you, you what just happened with seven seconds? Apparently, I, that's my big fear. We're leaving uh, too you know too little time on the clock, if you will. So uh, this one uh, this one stings a little because I feel better if like I, I I know I didn't win, but I'd actually feel a little bit better if like the bid went up. Like no one else. I was I wasn't how many, really bid. How many how many bids were there? Uh, in the auction. Two, two. So there was two bids. None of them were mine. I didn't get mine uh, in on time, apparently. So 
Well, I got to um, tell you, this is this is fantastic podcast and YouTube here. Okay, there's <laughs> nothing like talking to a guy who's watching a screen who just lost an auction. We- All right, I'm done watching the screen. I'm no, no, I feel sorry you lost out on that. Uh, but the whole point is, why would you feel comfortable buying buying a set online? Um, because it's not graded, and, and and we've been having a lot of graded conversations in the hobby recently. Well, I mean, you, number one, I, I think you got to trust somewhat, right? I know, you know, you. You can't trust everybody. We, we especially the last couple of years uh, with with the news cycle, right? But in this particular set, if you want me to be even specific to this set, this is not a a, a fake, really a fake kind of uh, set. Um, the one thing you want to watch with these Churchman boxing sets is in 1990 they actually did a reproduction set which looked just like the original, except on the back, on the bottom where it says like property of like Churchman cigarettes. The reproduction set says uh, reproduce 1990, but very subtle, very right. subtle. Uh, well, this, and uh, if you didn't know that it was there, you you could get duped. And uh, I, matter of fact, I almost bid on a reproduction set until I really looked at the pictures closely. Uh, it, it it wasn't in the title; it was in the description. So the title said, you know, 1938 Churchman's boxing set. But when you read the description, it said this is the 1990 reproduced uh, version. And and that's what tipped me off. So I wish eBay would make, you know, put it in the title. Because if someone didn't open that description, and maybe that's what even happened. I I obviously didn't bid on it. But someone else might have bid on it and thought they were getting a whole set. I, I think the other the other way to tell Danny, you know this, right? Sometimes if it's too good to be true, um, it is, right? So if the bidding, sure. you know, if you're bidding on something and it's just the bidding, it's like just way too cheap. That's sometimes a red flag, right? Um, See, I'm the wrong. Gotta... If it's too cheap or too expensive, it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I've never bought something at a price where I say, okay, that must be right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sort of the same way, but, um, you know, it is uh, you, sometimes you just gotta like, take a leap of faith. I, I know it's a little dramatic, but um, obviously, if, you, if you're dealing with like a, 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 a single card that's of, of significance, you know, a Ryan rookie, uh, Manos, you 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 obviously, now you got all sort it may not even be, a, you know, may not be a, a reprint, it may be an original card, but now you got like the trimming factor you know and everyone thinks trimming is like the whole side it could be just even a, a corner uh you so, do cards a roll to get out a, a crease and make the card thinner there's it's hard it's hard it's listen you, you don't think it's hard how many times you hear a grading company slabs a trimmed card or an altered card right sure. they get full too so all you right know, so, you so let, let's, you, let's let's help people let's give them better advice than take a leap of okay. faith and you might get screwed so we, we're, we're better so where out there can you go to buy a raw card let's start with with the the biggest ones ebay's off authenticity guarantee and right what is it 250 or 300 dollars right now minimum price it's, it's 250 but it's it's rumored to come down okay it's rumored so to come down to like 150 th- they'll back you up on a raw card i believe yeah, well be- yeah they won't yeah. even send they it has to go through their authentication authentication first so you hear you know people say hey i bought the card but i never got it sent because ebay deemed it not not adequate. But so you get your I money back. Money back. Yep. Yeah. It gets the transaction gets reversed, right? Kind of sucks because you don't get card you were hoping to own. But at the same time, at least you're not duped out of your money and, and then have to, you know, try to try to fight it back. Okay. And the authenticity is certainly part of it. But how about the condition of the card? If you're buying a card and and you have to start talking about good, very good, excellent, I mean, grading is so subjective when you start using numbers. Without numbers, um, it it opens up a whole other can of worms. I found it interesting that PWCC partnered with Mike Baker to do some authenticating of their raw cards and and sort of an evaluation um, for the, I guess, the eye appeal for the raw cards that they've done before with graded cards. How do you feel about the eye appeal when you're not in person? Because I, I want to come back to in person. Well, you can look at the scans that the person uploaded, but you can also request additional scans, right? You can, if you're interested in the card, if it's on a, a selling 
platform or an auction site, you can contact the seller and say, hey, I'm, I'm potentially interested in buying this card or bidding on this card. Can you get me better pictures of, you know, all the corners, the top right corner? I think I see, you know, you might not say that to the person. Like, I think I see something. You might just say, hey, can I get a closer picture of the top right corner, please? Um, your best bet if you're contacting them anyway is just requesting even more pictures uh, and that sort of thing. You can ask questions. It's even more than pictures, Danny. You can ask, you know, the owner of the card to Providence. Where does it from? Can I ask you, how do you obtain it? Where is it from? Where did you get it? And Not so much. What this is true on eBay also. also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you might, you know, I think it's rude to say, hey, how much did you pay and how did you get it? I think you can sure. ask how you got it without asking them. If it's a rare what, item, I, I, I wouldn't do it on a, on a, uh, on the uh, top's crew. Yeah. I would there, never. It's yeah. bad. It's bad etiquette to say, hey, what, what do you got into it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I've had people tell me, you know, when you're trying to negotiate a price and you maybe you make an offer and they're like, hey, I got more into it myself than what you're what you're offering me. I can't do that. Right. Um, yep. So uh, but you generally you don't want to say, hey, what did you buy it for? Or what did you give up? Uh, for but you you can request information where did you get it was it a trade was it from your dad's collection like what's the provenance uh, of the card um you can request additional uh pictures it's not a good thing to do but you could say you know i see it, what looks like a small crease in the lower left corner is that what it is you know it's i mean you can do that you know they're gonna say no you know they might say no and you can you say well can i get a closer uh picture than to see what's given me me that impression that there is a crease uh there you know you if it's in a sleeve you can ask you know can you take a picture of it not in the sleeve or not in the semi-rigid or top loader um, you know, and if someone refuses to do some of that, you know, then they, they may lose a sale. That's, you know, obviously their, their choice, but, um, you know, you can, you can ask questions. I mean, nothing beats, I think most people will, will agree on this, right? You, I know you will, uh, for what you, you know, what you do for, for work, like nothing beats seeing it in person, right? Having it in oh, your hand, a doubt. even pulling out magnification and, and looking at it, right? Um, so, you know, anytime you buy something sight unseen, it's 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 really a leap of faith until you get it in your hands, right? And I've had that sort of transaction go both ways, right? I've bought a card that looked better in the scan, and when I got it, it you know, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't as, as great as I initially thought it might be. And I've had that go the other way, too, like the pleasant surprise. Like, hey, I'm buying this card. The scans weren't great, but I've, I still got, a, you know, a good price on it. And then you get the card and it's actually in better condition than you kind of envisioned it with maybe some bad scan. So that can, you know, it's crazy, but that can actually work uh, sort of in reverse uh, too. I mean, not often, but it, it has happened with cards I bought. Well, here, or, or I had a bad experience. That's part of the reason I wanted to talk about this today was I got this 57 Eddie Matthews. I'm working on the 57 set. Um, and I looked at all the scans, looked at all the pictures. Uh, it, it was given an arbitrary near mint uh, kind of designation. Uh, I truly believe this card was pressed or cut now that I have it. Um, it th didn't qualify for, you know, any authentication program. And, you know, and it's for my personal collection. So, I, I, you know, personally, I don't care a ton. Um, I'd like to replace it one day. I'm a little peeved. You know, I'm out a couple bucks. It is an Eddie Matthews 57. Um, but but that's, I guess that's the issue is, is I'm putting together a set. Some of these cards are going to be 20 to a hundred dollars. They're, they're not going to qualify. I'm not going to get them graded. You know, are, are there sites that, that we trust better as, as raw buyers, you know, or is it the old fashioned you go to a lot of shows because when you pick up a card and you touch it and you smell it, you can tell that it's not the 92 reprint, you know, from when it's in your hands a lot easier. I mean, eBay with their authentication uh, now in place is, is a little bit safer than it was uh, previously. Um, you know, any any platform that offers sort of, um, you know, a money back guarantee type thing, even if it's not like eBay's uh, authentication, but where like if you feel like you didn't get what was represented online uh, when you when you finally get it right and there's certain cards you know i know we're talking heavy vintage here there's certain cards danny that i won't buy almost raw anymore uh, so one that one that really stands out 
to me, and I own some, they're all graded, um, is the 2011, uh, you know, Trout Update. Uh, uh, and I'll, I've told this story on, on my podcast. A lot of people don't know deal. about this. Th- this is actually something people should know about. Yeah. So this is a heavy, heavy Fugazi card. Like, there people have made counterfeits of this. Tops, you know, did their their retro where they made uh, a, a card that still looks like the original, but it's it, it's uh, uh, an anniversary uh, card. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a dealer friend of mine at a show, we were both set up. We weren't next to each other, so I didn't see the deal but he's like hey man i just bought these 10 mike trout uh update rooks all from one guy and he handed them to me he said what do you think and i'm like well you got to get them you just get them all graded you know and um you know how you did and uh he goes what do you think they'll grade at you know give me you think i got shots at nines and tens at least and i gave him a quick look i didn't take them out of the top loaders they were in top loaders i said they looking pretty uh, most of them look like they got a shot at at all nines and tens. I don't see anything that, you know, you know, screams like up oh, ding corner or anything like that. So make a long story shorter. He sent them in. I think they were sent to PSA, all 10 of them. Seven of them came back as fake. Three were graded. I think he got one 10 and two nines, but seven came back unslabbed as uh, non-authentic. So he bought 10 and, and seven were fakes. And we talked about it after the fact. And, you know, and I agree with him. He says, you know, John, and I don't even think the seller uh, that sold them to me knew they were fakes. I think he got them somebody and was flipping them uh, to me. And, sure. uh, you know, it, now you could argue like with the 10, and this was when Mike Trout update rookies were bringing even more so than they are now. We all know prices have sort of settled down. So he didn't, it, I think in the end, he didn't, if he lost money, it wasn't as bad as it could have been because of the one that did grade a, a 10. Um, but obviously when you send in 10 cards and you get seven of them back unslabbed as as fake, you know, that, that one stings a little. So, um, you know, there's, I, I trout, the trout scares me because I looked at, and here's why I say that. I looked at those 10 cards before he sent them in yep and i you know i've seen fake ones before where i've spotted them these didn't set off any of those alarms yet seven of them were still fake uh, to psa so you know if i'm ever if anyone ever brings me a like a trout update at a show or whatnot i i one of two things i'll, I'll either you know I, I want a graded one or uh, I'll buy I'll, I'll buy it on condition. Like, hey, I'll pay for it to get great. Let's agree on a price. I'll send it in for grading. I'll pay for the grading. If it comes back authentic and graded, we'll, I'll pay that price. If it doesn't, I'm not, right? And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, that's, that's just one of those cards. I know it's not a vintage era card, but, uh, and they're vintage era cards too that were, are the same way. The Ryan Rookie is classic for... Uh, a lot of fakes yeah, sure. out there, you know. Well, I'm, so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an example of something that happened to me because my wife pulled a card out of a pack. So let, you open a good old-fashioned pack of cards and you get a card out of the pack. You assume it's real. You assume everything's authentic. But I don't want to pay to get it graded. So how do I learn about the card? You know, and the card she pulled, with, I'll go modern on you, is a Trinity Rodman autograph rookie. So I, yeah. if I want to sell this, how do I give that? comfort other than selling it through ebay you know to to a to a buyer if i set up at a show or somebody's selling at a show that's a that's a hard card to prove um and i'll give a shout out to one of our sponsors center stage um i did actually use their app to scan and to link to a previous ebay sale so i could compare the cards and it gave me an idea of condition and what they were selling for so shout out to center stage um in the real world application but i mean yeah you know if i'm selling that other than the ebay authentic authenticity guarantee you know it's really hard for a buyer to have that much trust unless they know me. you either know you or you I, I know it's i know it's inconvenient but kind of like what i just said with the trout you make a conditional sale right let's let's agree on the, i'll take them you know it's hey i'm gonna sell it for 300 bucks i'm gonna send it in i'll pay for the grading we're not we're not 
Haglin, I want that, that, that's good between that's good between friends, but you know that's not going to happen between. Yeah, strangers. no, you're right. It's tough. It's and, tough. Yeah, and you got to be careful. You know, this is a double edged sword, right? I, I've had an instance uh, where I someone bought a card off me, uh, you know, uh, on a plat on a platform, right, and then said, "Hey, it's not what what I uh, thought it was. It's not the card." And they did the switcheroo, right? They put their mm -hmm. they took their let they owned the card already in a lesser shape, and so eBay in this case sides with them and they send back the worst condition card and they get their money back so they upgraded their card for free right you gotta you switch a ruski well the, uh, this is so, the, the old days it was terrible when it was paypal yeah. uh, on everything this is so, why i know we're talking about raw cards and, and which is important but this is why grading such a big deal is because well, that's a these, fair point yeah. You know, that's because of these scenarios. So I think you got to find a dealer that you trust, a, a dealer that you know if there was something that came up that they would be reasonable uh, about it and at least hear you out, try to come up with some sort of, of resolution. Uh, somebody somebody than, in the comments put Greg Mars cards, and they're a huge seller of raw cards. Uh, yeah. You know, when you hear a company like that, you know, do you feel confident on their reputation and name buying from them more than somebody else? I mean, do you feel more confident well, I, buying yeah, from a comp I, I C, do. I guess? I do, but with reputation, right, sometimes comes higher prices, and that's what Dylan's saying, too. Greg Moore, you might as well buy it yep. because of, of what his raw cards are. Absolutely. Cost. Now, he does very he does very good business, so, you know, he's selling. He's, I, he, but, he but, used but to be a sponsor of Sports Bear Nation. But, but even, com even Com C, uh, same type of idea, you know, do you trust it um, them more? Well, uh, you know, with, with Com C, with Com C, uh, you know that they have the card in on their site. They have the card. It's not so. If I sell a card, what's going on, uh, Canton card? If I have a card on Com C, I don't actually have the card. They have the card. I sent them, and they've listed it. I can change the prices. But as a buyer, you know, do you feel better buying from a site like Com C because of their reputation I do. size? I, I do. Be I do because they've scanned it right, and so there it. If, if, in other words, if I buy a card from Com C and I get it, and I say, "Man, this is not what the scans look like," they, you know, they, at least there's a reference point there, Danny. You know what I mean? They can. Yep. But again, you could still, you know, they could come to you and say, "Come back and fire back and say that, you know, we sent you the card that was here, and that doesn't look like the card we sent you." So, I mean, if it's not in person, there's always that risk. I hate to say it, but do you, do you have a you know, kind of a dollar limit or? A you don't have to share yeah the number, i mean but you know if, if anytime you get into three figures definitely four figures if you're if you're buying cards like that unless you absolutely know the provenance or you just trust that dealer almost unconditionally uh you almost you know i i, I just really will, will buy graded now you know i buy collect right so you're 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 offering one price for you know eight tote and you're just you know you're offering a price let's be let's be honest and genuine right you're offering a price where you know you're trying to make them happy but you're also giving yourself a lot of elbow room to come out okay whether you're reselling or even keeping the card so in those kind of deals even if there's a car of a card or two maybe that doesn't cut the muster you, you're still probably okay but if you're going if you're buying one or two significant cards like on an individual basis you know you know for example the jackie I'm, i was never going to buy that card raw um sure. you know uh, i can even i can even tell well i i, I don't want you know I, I tell a story i was walking with dr beckett before i eventually got the jacket and he knew i was looking for it and i saw Saw one in the case at the National. This was a couple years ago. I think it was the Chicago one. It wasn't the Atlantic City one. And the price was kind of decent. And I, I said, Dr. Beckett, take a look at this. What do you think? And he kind of elbowed me. And we kept walking. And he goes, no. You know, that's huh. all he really said. Like, no, I wouldn't buy that one. And without saying it, I really well, felt ever, like he was he was basically telling me he didn't think guys, John's, a man, there was the people, off John's a man of the people. His advice is take Dr. Beckett around to a card show with you. It uh, wasn't we weren't even it that, wasn't that, that's even a very down to earth deal. answer. That's a very down to earth yeah. answer. 
It was just we <laughs> happened to be walking around the same time, and I remember seeing it at that table, and I wanted to get his sort of thought. Uh, I don't real quick. I want to say hi to some of the people in the comments. Uh, Greg Yef, good evening, everyone. Hello, Dylan. We got a hello in uh, Can Card Collector. What's good, Brooklyn? Shout out to John's. Uh, I guess what do you what do you call Brooklyn? Your your hometown? Is that what you refer to it as? The hometown. I know it's a, it's a city, but uh, you know where you're from is your hometown. It's my hometown. Um, also, like to thank everybody a lot of feedback from the since we're talking about the dr beckett uh the dr beckett episode last week uh thanks for all the feedback in the comments uh any comments you guys have uh, if there's anybody that you really want to see as a guest or topics you want us to talk about uh certainly always put those in and you can leave comments afterwards uh on the uh, podcast chats or the YouTube chats. Uh, but also, if you're in the chat right now, um, I'm curious where you guys feel comfortable buying raw cards from, because uh, I've been searching a little bit more. I've been buying, I guess, more Com C than I have previously, and I'm starting to just try to figure out if I'm comfortable there. So, uh, you know, Greg Morris, I've looked at. They're obviously, you know, huge. Probstein, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. They do a lot of graded as well, so I, I don't see specifically good deals but these are all ebay companies also um you know and, and i think that's one of the things is i feel much more comfortable doing raw in person when it comes down to it as we're talking about it you know i i think that's one of the reasons i do do a lot of shows is i do like it in person um yeah yeah no doubt i mean there are a lot of a lot of reputable dealers um you know i mean S- Greg, SCB. Greg, he says eBay and Com C. Yeah. Right. If you if you take out the Sports Collectors Digest uh, and, and read that, uh, you know, they have a lot of ads for like dealers that have been around 30, 40, even 50 years, right? Uh, Burbank, yeah. I mean, they're they're huge. They, they've got probably one of the biggest inventories in, in, in the country, probably in the world, right? When it comes to, to cards, um, you know. So, you know, sometimes you just got to like do it, right? And, and just, you know, no, cross your fingers. But again, when you get into those higher dollar cards, right? It's one thing buying a card for fifty dollars and getting burnt, and then there's one thing you know, it's another thing buying a card for five hundred or five thousand and getting it burnt. It's a whole different thing. So always, uh, you know, it, it doesn't even hurt to ask the seller, right? What's your, you know, guarantee policy? What's your return policy? Um, and uh, you know, again, you can ask questions. Hey, can I ask you where the card came from? You know, um, you, you really can't ask what they paid for, but hey, where did it come from? Did was it a collection you bought out? Was it something from your own personal collection from many moons ago and you still have? have it dads where where did it come from right you know i have a i have a don drysdale rookie uh, in my showcase uh you know, I still have it. And someone asked me, hey, can I ask you where you got this card? Yeah, it's, it was. Um, it Tom was Cy- it's Tom Cy- Tom Cyberger? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. it was my dad's card. My dad gave it to me. It's from right. his collection. He said, here, John, I want you to have it. It was no, not in perfect shape, a little beat up. Um, so that's that's where it's from, my dad's collection. So I don't have a problem saying that. You know what I mean? That doesn't change. Well, I'm, really I'm going to cut you off while you're being sentimental. Uh, Can Card Collector says, four sharp corners i've never done business with them i'm curious uh, uh, what people think about them greg e. f uh, facebook groups uh, you know what i'm hearing more and more people uh yeah. they're saying facebook groups are blowing up a little bit right now um that, that they've always been big uh we have uh, clean sweep auctions has uh, been very good with their grades of raw well, that's the important yeah. thing is, are they accurate? Ziggy, Com C still provides picks the actual cards with notes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's a key thing uh, is is that description. And, and Ziggy, that's exactly uh, what we're talking about is, you know, what makes you feel comfortable buying raw? Because uh, not everybody uh, wants to or can afford to uh, have everything great. And, uh, you know, so Four Sharp well, Corners is awesome. That's good to know. Let me ask you, Danny, have you ever bought off a Facebook group? Um, I... I have, and I've sold, but only on behalf of clients. Um, yeah. I am, I, however, am negotiating my first Facebook group purchase right now. Yeah. I, I've bought not a ton, but a considerable amount of cards off Facebook, Facebook groups. I'm going to knock on wood here. Uh, you hear, sometimes you hear the horror story. Do, uh, I've just been fortunate. I've never had in any of my purchases off Facebook groups. I've been uh, fortunate not to have. And you, again, you can ask for vouchers on Facebook groups, right? So yep. you can say, hey, has anyone dealt with Danny Black? What, what, uh, what are the thoughts, right? And if 10 people say, oh, Oh man, I bought some, you know, bought numerous deals from Danny. All all went well. All right. right. I just lost you an auction. That? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I just lost an auction. 
I, I was as, five dollars under. All right. I'm yeah, sorry. not 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 as bad as I did, where your bid didn't even get calculated and the, no. the bid never went up. So, um, but you know, you can ask for vouchers, you can ask for references, especially on a on a bigger deal. You want to be careful. Like if you're asking for vouchers on a twenty five dollars sale, you know, maybe not the greatest etiquette in the world. But you're 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 more, you know, you can do that. So you know, it's America, right? You can ask, but you know, probably save those for your, you know, probably three figure or or higher uh, deals. But again, you can ask for vouchers anytime uh, you want. You know, you can even ask the seller, hey, can you give me a list of some people you've sold uh, before, you know, uh, and, and you uh, can contact them. But again, when you ask for vouchers and you ask for references, that's, you got to keep in mind, that's going to extend the time to consummate the deal. And depending on the card or the deal, right, or the lot, someone else may swoop in and just say, I'm buying it, right? So take it. So you, you, re- you run the risk of losing the deal the longer you wait or you, you're too careful, right? So, you know, you got to weigh all those factors, right? How bad do you want it? John, Where I'm going to let are you, you willing this. to risk? Are you willing to risk maybe losing the deal in the time it takes to ask for references, vouchers, who's dealt with this, you know, and, um, you know, then the card's gone. That That's happened to me. You know, I asked uh, people, hey, anyone ever dealt with this person? Uh, I got some good feedback. You go back and inquire about their card, and he tells you, hey, the card, someone else bought the card, right? You lose, you lose it. Okay. So that's so, the, that's the risk. The, 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 this, this right now we're calling this segment. Do you like it raw? And uh, comment from Ziggy: Raw in person feels better. Virtual online just isn't the same. Parentheses: We are talking cards, right? Well, I, uh, it is late on a Friday, and uh, I, I think we've each had an adult beverage. So uh, yes, yeah, Ziggy, we are still talking cards. Uh, yes, cheer, cheers to that. Uh, good evening to everybody in the chat. Thank you for your yeah. Nothing and Ziggy. And, and, and Michael's right, right? Nothing beats. That's why, you know, 50, 60,000 people come to the national, right? You meet people in person, like, right? We, we can talk. Hey, that's why I go to a mall show sometimes. Yeah. We can do stream yard all the time. Right. But to, to hang out in person and meet people in person, right. There's an allure to that. That, that there's something, you know, you, it does, you can't replicate that. Same thing with buying a card in person. I, you know, I, the national to me now is meeting people I like and, 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 and our friends with. Uh, and it's also an opportunity for me to get two or three expensive, you know, for me, expensive uh, cards. I look forward to it. It's sort of like, you know, you look forward to Christmas, right? Not in your case, but, but uh, you look, you know, John, I, John, we're co host on a show called Card Mentions. <laughs> I was just like to let everybody know where John so is and his adult we drinks this evening. We are co-hosting card mentions. And tell me but, again. Tell me again. But I go to the national to to you know promote the show, meet people, go to dinner, hang out with people, talk to people. But I also go because it's an opportunity to buy two or three cards off my want list of, of significance in person, uh, graded or and or maybe raw, most likely graded. Uh, and you can't like like Ziggy said, Michael said, you can't. You can't replicate that. There is no substitute. It's either in person or online, right? And, you know, we, we talk about online, right? A lot of things could go wrong in online, right? Uh, you can buy the card and no, through no fault of the seller, right? We hear stuff gets lost in the mail. I just sent an SGC bulk sub, two-day priority that took eight days to get to Boca Raton, Florida. You know very well about it. We, yep. we were, I was, I was a nervous wreck talking to you. Like, hey, man, what if this package is lost? These aren't even my cards. There's 246 high dollar, you know, mostly high dollar cards. I I, 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 will, I will verify it was two days shipping, and it, and it was like six days uh, or something. You ridiculous. know, got stuck in Charleston, with no, with no updates for three days with no update. I'm like, did it fall off the roller? Did an employee put it in the back of his car? You like, guys don't understand. So- for 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 those six days, I spent more time on the phone with John than I spent time with my wife. It was <laughs> it was very nerve wracking. All right, we're we're, we're we're, we're going to wrap it up here on the uh, Do yep. You Like It Raw segment. Um, and uh, we're going to move on to uh, our bets, picks, and fantasy advice. So let's. Welcome to the failure segment, where John and Danny share their picks sure to go wrong. And uh, this week, this segment is brought to you by our partners at SGC. Experience, quality, 
consistency, and the quickest turnaround times in the grading industry, we are proud to partner with SGC Grading. Check them out at www.gosgc.com. All right, John. Well, we've got the uh, national championship game uh, being played, uh, I think, Monday, uh, the night that the audio on this will come out. So uh, we've got it on screen, and this is at the time of uh, the live recording here on Friday night. Uh, BCS championship game, TCU plus 12 and a half. Uh, It's considered at Georgia, but it is neutral site. So uh, TCU plus 12 and a half. Who do you like there uh, with Georgia? Man, well, Georgia is the defending champ. This game's at SoFi Stadium, uh, California, for just for clarification. Um, I'm rooting, you know, I have a lot of friends that are Georgia fans, so I don't really have a rooting interest either way. Like, whoever wins, I'm not going to be that upset. Uh, I, I tend to root for the underdogs in these situations when I don't have a dog in the fight. Georgia won it last year. It'd be nice to see uh, TCU, I believe it would be their first ever national title. Um, I don't think they've ever won before. Uh, so I'm rooting for them, but I won't be uh, disappointed if, if, you know, crushed if, if Georgia wins. Um, that's a big number, the 12 and a half. 12 and a half is a real um, big number. Yeah, I'm, 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 I, I think and, Georgia, and their quarterback is legit. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, I think Georgia wins the game. I don't know if they cover. So if I, I'm going to pick the spread here, I'm going to take TCU in the points. I'm not, I'm not sure they can pull off. Uh, I think the magic might run out for them here uh, in the title game, but I think they might be able to keep this uh, competitive. I'm scared maybe a late Georgia touchdown puts it over the spread, but I think this is going to be a pretty decent competitive game. So I'm going to take the point and, and TCU, not, not the money line here to outright win, but give me 12 and a half. You know, when the game starts, it's 12 and a half, you know, TCU 12.5 Georgia, nothing. Yep. I, I like that a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And the over under is at 63. Before I give my picks, uh, how do you like that over under? It's, it's actually a big number as well. If it was the NFL college, you never know. Both these teams score points. Uh, so I, 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 you know, I, it is a big number, but I, I can see like a 42 31 type game. That's 73 points. So I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the over. So I'm going to take the points on TCU and I'm going to take the over. And uh, real quick, we have a comment and uh, this might be more down your your alley here. So I'll let you read this one. Yeah. Who, who do you got on the Javante Davis Hector Garcia fight? Um, I'm not an expert. Like I used to be a huge boxing fan, so I don't know. You, like, you could read the question. That makes you the expert on the show. <laughs> So I know uh, if my memory, you know, Davis has not has, has kind of struggled lately. I know I just had uh, less less Wolf on. He actually talked about this. Um, so I, I'm just, you know, I got a fifty percent chance of getting this right. Right? I'm gonna go Hector Garcia. Go Hector. All right, Hector Garcia, and he's gonna take the eyebrow. Uh, BCS championship game with TCU twelve and a half. I'm gonna take Georgia. I think, uh, with all due respect to to my TCU friends, it's been a great run. Um, I think. They're a fantastic team. Uh, I, I I just think at this point, George has been on a mission, and I think uh, Stetson Bennett uh, is going to cap off his career, and I think they're just going to kind of uh, kind of lay down the yes. law there. Yeah, Stetson Bennett is like 34 years old, so you're right. He's very experienced. And- well, he's he's earned it. I mean, it's been a 10-year career. Uh, lo- lovely. Uh, he's actually going to be graduating with his son, which is which is a phenomenal achievement. <laughs> Miles and tough to Stetson and his son. Um <laughs> And the over under at sixty three. Uh, I I like the over on that uh, as well. I I, I just think it's going to be a little bit of a shootout. Um, so yeah. I like the over under. Um, I will admit on the boxing question, I um, have not heard of either one of those gentlemen. I'm sure they are lovely. Uh, if they would ever like to grab a cup of coffee, I am available. But I could not uh, could not tell you uh, who to bet for on that. Uh, what 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 else uh, are you looking at uh, with the NFL season uh, going into the final week? here anything else catch your eye or are you just ready to put yourself well, out of misery yeah well listen i was in misery but somehow my steelers are like mathematically still alive they need some help here they gotta first off they gotta beat cleveland and they gotta have uh the jets beat miami and buffalo beat new england i'm confident about buffalo beat new england especially now with the with the great uh demar hamlin news that uh, uh the breathing tube is out he zoomed uh he facetimed with the team and and talked to him uh, I think they're going to be inspired. Uh, so I think Buffalo beats New England. I'm not as confident that the Jets are going to beat Miami. And I know Miami is 
sputtering a little bit, but it's still the Jets. Miami, Miami, the Jets are eliminated. Miami can make the playoffs by beating the Jets. So I think Miami comes inspired, uh, wins. And then the other thing I want to say, it's Joe Flacco is the starting quarterback right now. for the Elite Jets. quarterback. Uh, elite quarterback Joe Flacco, who won a yeah, Super Bowl elite, for my they, Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, that was, you were like 12 years old. I was at the game. <laughs> I was at the game. So, <laughs> so anytime, anytime your your playoff hopes rest on a fifty five year old Joe Flacco, you're probably not going to the playoff. Listen, I mean, what, is, what, the what, is, what does it say about Zach Wilson that they're that they're benching him for Flacco? It says that Zach Wilson is the bust I said he was when he got drafted number two overall. Uh, but they've killed ago. all trade. Yeah. All I mean, they've basically. Well, you got to said- say that, right? If you're trying to market a player you don't like, right? You're not going to like. I'm I'm the GM of the Jets. You're the GM of the Ravens, uh, and you want Zach Wilson. You don't, but just hypothetically, right? I'm not going to say, hey man, Zach Wilson's terrible. We can't stand him. I'm going to say, hey, he's young, he's raw. We're going to work on some stuff. We're open to the discussions. If anyone else is in, you know, you're going to sell your guy, right? You're going to sell your commodity, right? We do that with our cards too, right? Absolutely. So, uh, the Jets, the Jets have have moved on from him already, but they're not going to. They're not going to say it like that, right? They're trying to keep some of his trade. They're, they're going to get a draft pick. What round? I don't know. But if you if you trash your own guy, you're going to get a fifth, sixth, or seventh round and pick. If you sell him a little bit, maybe you get a third or fourth round. And round on that same logic, we get a question right now. Uh, what do you think happens with Derek Carr and Trey Lance next season? I'm going to predict that neither one of them are with their current teams, and I'm going to predict wow. that, what John, that what John said is right, that all everything you hear is going to be lovely spin about why you should be happy to trade for them and give up a pick um, or, or uh, you know, on the way out, it will be uh, nice cities. I, I don't think you're going to see a lot of bridges. I, I only there. think you're half right. I only think you're half right there. I think Derek Carr is definitely out of Las Vegas. Uh, and I want to ask you about, so I think Derek, so let's, uh, I'm going to say Derek Carr is your next uh, Indianapolis Colt quarterback. Uh, uh-huh. I, I want to hear your thoughts on Trey Lance. You don't, I I'm think, not, I'm I, th- sure I think, I think, Bart, but Bryce I don't per- think he's not in San Francisco. I think it's Bryce Purdy and Jimmy G. And they trade Lance, or or Lance backs up Purdy. I don't. I I think there's. I don't think Lance is a quarterback for a Super Bowl contending team, and that's where they are. And I don't think Purdy would have been either, except he went in there and did it. And Lance has not played as well as Purdy has. Quite frankly, in the little time they've had, yeah, I'm gonna disagree. I I think you're right. On I think we're both right on Carr. He he's somewhere else. I think Lance is in San Francisco. He may not start because I'm hearing you know little birdie saying maybe Tom Brady comes home to his hometown team for his last year in the NFL. Wow! And the, the what better opportunity, segment. right? Trey Trey Lance l- learns from the goat, right? Trey Lance holds the clipboard for Tom Brady and then takes over from Tom Brady. Uh, San Francisco. That's my prediction. Uh, and just Tom remember Brady to San Fran. Welcome this to is... the failure segment where John and Danny share their picks <laughs> sure to go wrong. Welcome to the failure the segment where John and Danny not... share their picks sure yeah, to go wrong. Right. I had to play that a couple times uh, just on, on the uh, tinfoil uh, Tom Brady. Uh, Jimmy uh, G said he's going to take a pay cut to stay in Frisco. There you go. I am correct. And I think it is wrong and we're out of time. So we're going to leave it with that. <laughs> Um, anything else? In all, all seriousness, John, uh, I, I know we want to let everybody uh, get out of their cars and uh, go see their families when they're listening. To us. I I think Jim I, I think Jimmy G is is not in San Francisco. I think they've they're settled on Purdy and Lance. And like I said, you might see number twelve wearing a 49ers uniform for his last season in the NFL. All right. Well, how, how about uh, we'll, we'll put breakfast at the National on it if we have an answer. By all the way. right. All, all right. right. Yeah, we there, might there, not, there, but, there's uh, our there's yeah. our Menchi our Menchi bet. So uh, for episode three of of uh, Card Menches is in the book. Uh, appreciate you guys as always. Please leave comments, uh, click like and follow, so we can keep bringing this to you. And uh, we will definitely uh, catch you at two weeks from today. Will be the next uh, live episode, and the audio will always come out on Monday mornings, so you can download it and listen to it throughout the week. For John, I'm Danny. Have a good one. Take care.